All right, so uh, thank you for coming today and letting us present to you. We're going to talk about our fourth year design project where we made a nanocomposite of silicon dioxide and graphite oxide for use in water filtration to remove heavy metal from waters. So first, a quick overview of what we'll do. Gavin will talk about the problem that we're facing, uh, current solutions in the market, and our proposed solution. Then I will go on to talk about the customer requirements considered when designing it and the device creation. Gavin will continue with device testing and results. I will give a bit more on the results, talk about future steps, and finally Gavin will close us up. <coughs> so, heavy metal contamination is incredibly dangerous for human health. And a large part of this is because the human body is not capable of removing heavy metal con contamination easily. This means that should heavy metal be, even heavy metals in small amounts over a long period of time can quickly accumulate into dangerous chronic illnesses. Chronic heavy metal illnesses tend to result in kidney damage, liver damage, nervous system damage, and brain damage, in addition to significant increase in the rate of cancers in all those areas. <coughs> heavy metal damage is far more common than you expect. Um, even recently, as the example picture shows, there was a large wastewater spill in Colorado in the Animas River um, due to attempts to clean up a old mine, which had been previously leaking small amounts of heavy metals into the river. Um, due to a dam breaking, this river was incredibly contaminated and is going to be a significant health danger to all the people living in the area. However, this is not such dramatic. The instances are not the only instances of heavy metal contamination. Other regions, such as Africa, India, and some areas in China, also have experienced chronic amounts of heavy metal contamination due to industry activities. So, there are other solutions available. The primary two are to perform either a deionization or nanofiltration setup, which is simply separating two volumes of water by a very precise filter and having it slowly, slowly filter through without access to the heavy metal ions. However, this is a significant problem because it is very slow, requires a large amount of scale, and wastes a significant amount of water that is left highly, with highly concentrated heavy metal, heavy metal ions and that must be disposed of. Another possible option is to perform deionization, where a resin containing complementary ions is submerged in the water. Um, slowly, this resin will react, replacing heavy metal ions with less dangerous ions, like sodium. However, this is also not optimal because it is slow, expensive, and the, the ions are not completely safe. So, our solution. To overcome the current limitations of heavy metal ions, we've adapted a low we want to design a low-cost, portable, personal water filtration system. Our design is structured around a nanocomposite of silicon, silicon and graphite oxide. These two chemicals are both capable of binding heavy metals in limited supply. However, combining them both into a nanodispersed solution significantly increases the amount of heavy metals that can be binding by increasing the relevant surface area and increasing the surface area to volume ratio. This will hopefully increase the amount of filtration gram by using this compared to traditional methods and reduce the cost such that it can be deployed on a personal scale. All right, so there are a number of requirements that need to be met for a product to be brought to market successfully, and these guided our design process. The primary requirement would be the capability to remove heavy metals from water. Research was done on a number of heavy metal candidates to determine allowable concentrations in water. These numbers come from the World Health Organization standards or from the Canadian drinking water standards. Uh, obviously, our device would need to be able to reduce water that is unsafe to below these allowed concentrations. The secondary requirement on our product is it needs to be cost efficient. We are targeting applying this as portable personal water filtration to areas of need, and sometimes these are not the most wealthy of locations. The more affordable it is, the better our product will do. Hands in hands with affordability, the longer lasting the device is, and the capability to reuse or rejuvenate the product will improve its cost efficiency. Additionally, a very scalable uh, synthesis process will allow for a low cost device. And finally, the device must be portable and easy to use. This is a requirement on both the size and weight of the device. It must also be safe for the environment. So the first step in making the device, the first step in making the device was material consideration. Our solution involves using a silica graphite oxide nanocomposite coating a mem membrane filter for water filtration. Investigation showed that graphite oxide was available to purchase, but this would be the most expensive component. Fabrication of it could be done in lab to reduce costs, 
However, for the prototype, we decided to go with the commercially available method that was produced using the modified Hummer's method. Purchasing of silica led to the decision on what particle size we wanted to use. An engineering trade-off would need to be balanced between the particle size, with the smaller particle size providing a good surface area to volume ratio, but traded off with the filtration rate. This is because, for at least the first generation prototype, we wanted to encompass our nanocomposite with a membrane filter that would ensure that no loose silica could recontaminate the water. And a lower pore size on the filter would lead to a lower filtration rate. Uh, a particle size of 300 nanometers for the silica was decided upon. For the highest filtration rate of a membrane, we would want the largest filter diameter we could have whilst having the pore size to encompass the silica. Uh, due to availability, unfortunately, the largest filter we could acquire was 49 millimeters in diameter. It had a pore size of 220 nanometers, which would be smaller than the silica and contain it in the product. Creation of our nanocomposite was a relatively straightforward chemical procedure, which involves binding the nanoparticles of silica to our graphite oxide to make the nanocomposite. This was done in a two-step process. First, the silica particles were functionalized by reaction with amino pro uh, aminopropyl triethoxysilane, or APS. This added amine groups to the silica particles. The reaction was supposed to last 12 hours to fully functionalize it, but limitations to laboratory time only allowed for us to do a six-hour reaction on our particles. Once functionalized, these silica particles can be reacted with the graphite oxide directly. In an aqueous solution of graphite oxide, the silica was slowly added until it was approximately 40 weight percent of the solution. This was expected to form a precipitate between the silica and graphite oxide. However, no such precipitate was observed. This is believed to be due to the reduced time our silica was allowed to functionalize for. Instead, we collected our active material through centrifugation of the, of the product and then applied it to a membrane for filtering purposes. In addition to this, we modeled a 3D housing for our device to apply it to market. Watch out. Um, uh, the 3D housing was modeled in a number of different sections, each with their own requirements. The lower reservoir was created on the bottom to hold two liters of water, which would have a spout for pouring and be the filtered water. In the middle, there was a filter casing, designed that it could be split into two to add the filter and the active material, but then resealed for selling. Holes were created in the filter casing to allow water to flow through. The upper reservoir was created with one liter of water uh, capacity and had an open top to allow a removable lid. The model was to be 3D printed for a prototype with ABS. Unfortunate issues with processing allowed only the filter casing to be printed in time for the symposium demonstration. But this model could also be applicable to larger scale production, as it could be used to design a large scale molding of it to create low cost products to be sold for market. Okay. To verify that our device met all the customer requirements we had defined, we set up three primary tests to add to verify certain key performance metrics. The first test, not listed on the slides, was a simple filtration speed test. We attempted to filter 10 milliliters of water through, the, through the, the, a scent tank filter with the active material applied to it, to determine if the filtration would be competitive with other fil water filtration methods. Um, the next test we attempted to do was a simple filtration quality test. A solution was made up of with heavy metal, with various heavy metals of various concentrations, and they were applied to the filter. Then all of these solutions were tested using ICP, um, an analytic technique in which what small vo volumes of water are taken out, misted, bombarded with plasma ions, and let the, ion the ionization recombine. This produces a characteristic spectrum of fluorescence for each element and can be used to accurately determine the concentrations of very small concentrations of various elements in water. The last test we did was an SEM t imaging of dried, a dried sample of our active material. This was used to attempt to characterize this material, determine if the desired nanostructures occurred, and if not, what could be done to try and fix the, the issues. Okay. The flow rate testing was sat sadly unsatisfactory. Um, though this may partially be, to, be due to the fact that these filters we originally planned to use were not available and we had to use much smaller rate filters, there's also a significant chance that the flow, flow rate through the filter was reduced by the active material used. This would force us to have a trade-off between the amount of active material that we wanted to use um, and the flow rate of the final filter, which is not ideal as it forces us to compromise the amount of active material being used if we want to have a competitive flow rate with other water filtration methods. 
Because of the trade-off, we used 18.5 milligrams of paste on our active material for the filtration test, which was less than originally planned, but still the most we had to do was achieving a reasonable filtration rate for market samples of the device. For the first batch of the filtration testing, we made up nickel samples, um, f five samples with known concentrations of 30, 10, 30, and 60 micrograms, and filtered samples from the 30 and 60 microgram samples. So taking these all, were analyzed using ICP to determine their relative concentrations. However, these were, this concentration was not available. Due to the low concentrations requirements of nickel to help before it became Due to the fact that nickel is very dangerous even at extremely low concentrations and the relatively low signaling intensity of nickel under ICP testing, we were unable to retrieve meaningful results from this test. Thus, due to mounting time and budget pressures, we performed a second test with iron. Iron is not as significant a heavy metal in terms of its risk to the populace. However, it is, has very high relative concentrations that need to be filtered and it has a very strong response on ICP when using under ICP testing. We made up three samples of iron, one with 15, 1.15 micrograms, 1.5 mi mi milligrams per liter, another with three milligrams per liter, and lastly, a filtered sample of the three milligrams per liter. These were compared to a set of iron standards um, of various concentrations of iron. Um, judging by the graph of the results, we can determine that the filtered sample as an approximate concentration of one milligram per liter. This puts the filtered sample's concentration below the World Health Organization standard of two milligrams per liter for safe concentrations of iron and water, and it represents a 66% reduction in the amount of heavy metals with a single pass of the filter. All right, so additional characterization was then done by SEM imaging to view the nanocomposite structure. Imaging was done that found a number of particles of size 300 nanometers, which is the individual size of the silicon nanoparticles. You can see in the upper image, a single particle of 300 nanometers is viewed on the graphite oxide background. Uh, imaging of the general area was then done, zoomed out around the nanoparticle to see the general structure of our nanocomposite. Can be seen that there is a good, a well dispersed amount of silica on our nanocomposite. However, larger clumps of particles and aggregates can be observed, which are less than ideal for the characteristics that we want. Additionally, there is a rather low coverage of the low surface coverage of our graphite oxide. This shows us that our process for producing the nanocomposite is working. However, it is not fully efficient. Steps can be taken to reduce the silicon aggregation and to be tuned it to make a better nanocomposite for filtration. Finally, the final customer requirement that has not yet been tested or discussed was the low cost that we desired for our product. Um, we wanted it to be low cost so it could be applied to many locations where they may not be the wealthiest locations but still need heavy metal filtration. Uh, this was done in two steps. First, a cost estimate was done for injection molding of our physical housing, which would be, was modeled through Comsol. The majority of the cost for injection molding is based on the mold creation, so each unit is significantly less expensive on a larger production run. A 10,000 part production run led to $3.40 for the housing, whilst a 100,000 product part production run led to $1.30 for it. Additionally, the cost of the membrane needed to be accounted for. The largest advertised packaging of the membranes desired led to $13 a membrane. However, the price is expected to decrease with a larger order due to the fabrication of them. The chemical cost analysis was done based on a large scale production of the nanocomposite and converted to a cost per gram of our composite, assuming 100% yield. The majority of the cost came from the graphite oxide, which led to about $26 per gram of active material. However, if graphite oxide is to be produced in the lab rather than purchased commercially, the cost is expected to be able to be brought much lower than this. In total, a mass-produced unit would be containing one gram of our nanocomposite would be expected to cost around $40 to the consumer. When looking at the future steps for a device, it's important to remember that this is the first generation of our product, and a lot can be gained from the prototype to produce better designs for market. The first step to be taken would be to test a larger selection of heavy metals for the current prototype. Exploring the wide application of this filtration technique will help to improve the potential for widespread use. Next important aspect to, text, to test is an attempt to reduce the aggregation of our silicon in the nanocomposites. Along with this, we would also want to test the silicon bonding within the nanocomposite. Our first generation design used a very low pore size filter, 
to ensure that any loose, if there may be loose silica within the composite, it will be contained within the filtration unit and not contaminate the water. However, with this device fabricated, we can test the nanocomposite to ensure that there would be no loose silica. If this can be guaranteed, then we would be able to use a larger pore size filter without, well, we would be able to safely use a larger pore size filter without, danger, without uh, contaminating the water with silica if we can prove that it's fully bound to the nanocomposite. This larger filter would improve the flow rate and allow for an increased amount of active material without sacrificing an adequate flow rate. More active material would lead for better filtering and a longer lasting filter product. In conclusion, the first generation prototype of our filtration system has a lot of promise for a marketable filtration system. It's capable of meeting our primary filtration requirements that were put before it, and it's the capability to filter heavy metals from water compared to other filters, while also being a low cost and portable system. However, despite this successful demonstration, there are still many avenues for improvement. The synthesis of the nanocomposite could be improved to increase the dispersion of the silica nanoparticles, increase the binding of silica nanoparticles to enable us to use a lower a lower cost, higher pore size filter to increase filtration rate safely, and to generally increase, tune the amount of both materials to increase the amount of heavy metal filtration relative to the existing test. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions? So right now, we believe that our composite is a bit low on its capacity to remove heavy metals um, because a, a lot of current applications are better, but we do believe that there is a lot that can be improved. We did not test maybe a multiple layer system or a more filtering system to get better filtration of heavy metals. We, so currently compared to the activated column, we believe that it's not quite as good at filtering, but we think that it, it can be improved to that level and hopefully at a lower cost, hopefully. Do you have reason to believe that graphene oxide is going to be more effective at binding than activated charcoal? Um, we, have do, we have looked into some research that suggests that it is very effective. We haven't done direct comparisons between activated charcoal, so we are not certain if it's more effective, but we, there has been a lot of research proving that it is very effective for use, so we decided to take this route for testing to see if we could show it being effective or more effective. Is the mechanism of, uh, of removal you're aiming for, is it size exclusion or absorption or uh, comments on what you're aiming for? The mechanism of removal we're aiming for would be absorption onto the, onto the graphite oxide and silica particles. 